Hey there, welcome to Old Man Runner. In today's video, I'm going to review this, the Nike Wild Horse 7. First, I'm going to show a video of me running around in them, then I'm going to review them. Finally, I'm going to see if I can recommend them. Usually, I have a compelling reason to buy a particular shoe, and then I try and figure out some reason, usually tenuous, as to the connection between the shoe and some sort of location, and I put two together and make a running video. In this instance, I did the opposite. I had the location first and I needed a shoe. Now, before Christmas, I had a knee injury, probably still have, but I'm running okay. But at that time, I didn't think I could even make a running video of a shoe. Uh, so, so I was late to the party of getting a shoe. Um, so with five hours to go before filming started, I picked up this in Flagstaff, Arizona in Run of Flagstaff. Great stock. This was the colorway I wanted and the shoe I wanted. Uh, it was a very, very pleasant uh, experience in the shop uh, and I'd like to thank uh, the salesperson who was from just around the corner, around the corner here, relatively, uh, from Wexford. She was fantastic. So chapeau to her. It was just a great place to buy a, a, a shoe. And uh, the other thing was, uh, as I noticed when I came out the door, it's on Route 66. Yes, the Route 66. So I did indeed get my kicks on Route 66. If you watch this channel uh, or follow me on Strava, you probably have an idea where I went to run an issue. But uh, if not, have a look and see if you think uh, this location matches the shoe. So enough waffling, let's go and run and see the shoes in action. Okay, so that was uh, the magnificent Monument Valley in Arizona. Stunning doesn't even begin to come into it. Um, uh, I didn't alter any of the footage. It's straight out of the GoPro, no edits, apart from I slowed a few clips down and, and probably zoomed in a few times. But I didn't do any color correcting whatsoever. That is what the GoPros picked up. I mean, I use GoPros, I, I, I'll, I'll do a video about, about cameras and stuff I use, but there's a bit of noise because they're, they've are they got small sensors, but on a small screen, which most people you will watch YouTube in pretty good, it's easy to see why they call it the painted desert. And I stood there for two hours, quite cold, 
looking at all this unfold and it was just magnificent. I mean, really magnificent. Uh, the running sections I had done the evening before I filmed the, the two the sunrises on the two different cameras at the beginning and at the end. Uh, I hadn't realized <laughs> that it's at about five and a half thousand feet and when I first played back the clips it was uh, very noisy. I mean noisy was me breathing. breathing. I just did, didn't dawn on me. Uh, and one of the sections where I'm I'm running downhill a long bit, I, I get down, I'm running, the longer I'm running, I'm suddenly realizing, hang on, I left my bag way back there with a couple of GoPros and a couple of tripods and a couple of other things. And I thought, have I any idea where I even left it? <laughs> so that's what I'm thinking when I'm running down there towards the end. But other than that, it was just a wonderful, peaceful place to run. Troy, you're a lucky man running around there. It is just absolutely uh, I, I'll go there again. It was just, it was, it was magnificent. Stay at the view. Uh, the GoPro shots were taken literally from the hotel balcony. Uh, it was uh, January, so it was cold. I mean, the running was cold. I wasn't cold when I ran, but the following morning I was actually very cold. Um, it was probably just above freezing. Um, but at that time of the year, I was expecting hordes of people. I know this coronavirus, and it's very serious and a lot of people can't travel. But there was, I think, a couple of people on the, on, on, on the terrace, a very easy to set up with GoPros. Um, there was me, uh, a, a very nice lady in, from Quebec who gave me her dog when she went into the shop. I, I, I love dogs. I do love the bow house. So anyway, she, I, I did that, that was, and there was a very nice man from Korea who offered me his coat and there was a couple of other people far away. In other words, you have the place to yourself. Uh, you can see in the video a few times a car goes here and there. Initially, I thought that's going to ruin all the shots, but actually it gives it a sense of timing and a sense of scale as, as the drama unfolds because one of those shots is a time lapse uh, shot every now and then, and one's uh, just footage speeded up. So uh, you can see in the cars, you can get an idea of the relative scale of the time. Sun goes down really fast. I wish it came up a bit quicker because after two hours, I was a bit cold. Anyway, enough of, again, enough waffling. Let's put the shoes on the turntable and have a look at their specifications. Uh, I obviously un unusually ran in the shoe before it's been filmed on the turntable, so it might have a couple of scratches and dents that it wouldn't have otherwise had from Nike. This shoe is a US 13, an EU War 47.5, UK 12, CM 31, BR 46, CN 310 in brackets 2.5. And in this size, it weighs in the left shoe 400 grams or 14.11 ounces, and in the right shoe, 399 grams or 14.07 ounces. It has a 22.5 millimeter stack height and it has an eight millimeter drop. Nike say this about the Wild Horse 7. Take on those tough and extreme trail runs with the rugged build of the Nike Wild Horse 7. Confidently take on rocky terrain with high abrasion rubber on the outsole that adds durable traction. The upper delivers durable ventilation with support where you need it. Foam midsole cushioning gives a neutral feel and provides responsiveness on every mile. Nike React Foam offers a soft, smooth ride that adds a little spring to your step. Extra cushioning around the heel helps keep your foot secure. Let's review the shoe and see if what Nike says is true. Well, if I stick the light into it and stick it on and stick it through, I mean, you don't see too much light transmission, so there's not that many holes in it, but it's reasonably breathable. I wouldn't say it's, it's uh, anything out of the ordinary. Um, there are nice simple laces on the shoe, uh, a simple pattern up and down, nothing overtly complicated. I'm not sure quite what the additional loop here does. Maybe it, it reduces strain, I, I, I don't know. Um, the tongue is padded, not on, not on the downside, but on the top where there's, a, there's an additional layer. What does this one say? This says Nike Trail Wild Horse. There's a little bit of padding underneath the decal. Uh, I suppose the thing that I notice most about the upper is I like this There's a sort of gaiter around the top it's a thin piece of fabric uh, the sort of heel structure is below and it's actually nicely padded internally but this bit wraps around your foot and stops a lot of dust and stuff falling into the shoe uh, I think it's a, it's a great addition to the shoe there's a removable liner and um, it's not that easy to remove I mean you can but it doesn't look like it's designed to but you can take it out it's not glued in particularly strongly and um, Nike talk about their dynamic fit system in, in, in around the midfoot we'll 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 have a look at that uh, as I described the running feel of the shoe. Nike use uh, their React foam in here. There's a ZoomX foam that is in a lot of the shoes I've reviewed. This is their React foam, which I think is not as soft as the ZoomX, which I think is great for this kind of shoe. Um, to me, this was an ideal level of, of uh, comfort in the shoe. Just the right bit of absorption, no more, no less. Um, 
I really did like the way it wraps up the side and goes up at the heel. Felt my heel was very well secured in this particular shoe. Uh, the outsole, I mean, I suppose it's, there's lots of lugs, isn't there? Uh, you can see, see the sort of grip. Uh, these are probably a bit dirtier because I've, I've actually running them, some bit of Arizona dust still on them, <laughs> even though I washed them a bit. Uh, there's a rock plate, a little bit of rock plate, I think, in here, but essentially there's lots of lugs for lots of grip and uh, some high abrasion rubber on the outsole of the React foam. The shoe is not particularly light, not particularly heavy at 400 grams or 14.11 ounces. It's kind of middleweight in relation to the trail shoes that I have. Um, it's uh, it's tight in the midsole. Uh, I'll go on to that. But uh, so consider possibly sizing up. Um, the Nike Dynamic Fit does work. It's trying to lock your foot in. Um, but just be, I'd be a little careful on the sizing. I really like the look of the shoe, I have to say. I mean, it was one of the things that appealed to me. This is called Black. Uh, dark beetroot, uh, dynamic turquoise, and bright crimson, which pretty much accurately seems to go with most of the colors that are on the shoe. Um, this colorway, strangely enough, I couldn't find it listed on the Nike USA website, even though I bought these in the USA. Um, but there's lots of different colorways in the various sites I looked at. I looked at the Australian one, the US one, the UK one, and the EU one for Ireland. And there's lots of different colorways in men's and women's, but it's not consistent throughout. Uh, I think uh, in some territories, there's a very limited range, in some there's an extensive range. And uh, it doesn't seem to match up between the sexes. Sometimes there's lots of uh, choices for women, sometimes less, but mm, there's lots of ones out there. Have a look around the world to find the color you want. I really like the running feel of the shoe. Uh, when you go testing, particularly somewhere as stunning as Monument Valley, you're not really thinking about the shoe. You've got 30 minutes before the sun's going down and you're running around thinking about your, your bag, where are you gonna make shots? You've never been there before. So you're doing all of that sort of stuff. So you can't really tell the feel of the shoe. Um, but I remember thinking it felt great when I put it on in the hotel room and uh, ran around without any bother. But it came to Sunday, I don't know what day today is, a couple of days ago, and I decided to go for a 90 minute long run around here in Dublin, in Ireland. And uh, so I took it all sorts of places. I went out for 90 minutes, just shy of 15K, on the pavement, on an easy run. I went on a pavement. I went on a sidewalk or footpath. I went on a granite wall up and down on the Great South Wall. I went on hard sand, soft sand, ridge sand. I went on shale. I went on loose stones along the seashore. And then I ran across uh, some playing pitches full of grass, which was slightly damp. And uh, they felt great. I mean, initially, initially in here, I felt a tightness. I mean, I did feel them tight in there. I thought, hmm. Uh, but I didn't after a short period of time. It, I seemed to have laced them up properly and they felt great by the end. Very nice uh, shoe to run in, I have to say. It's not a massively technical shoe. Um, I, I, I think it's great for light trails like I did in Monument Valley or like I did on Sunday around Dublin. Um, anything really technical and I, I'm not sure that this shoe is the one for it. But for the kind of running I do where there's, there's not a huge amount of of, of complexity in any of the trails that I run in. And a lot of it is on street and then onto trail. Um, it's, it's, it's perfect for me. I'm, <laughs> it's a shoe I really like. Let's talk about costs. And I apologize if this is a slight rabbit hole. Okay. In Ireland, on the Nike website, you can get the shoe for 71 euro and 97 cent, 47% off in men's and women's, which is a really good value in this color. I think some of those sizes might have sold out at that rate, but ordinarily it's 119 euro or 199 cent. Now, uh, when you go to the US, it's $130. I bought it for $130 in Flagstaff, but you can get it in some colorways discounted by 17%. No discount for women, it would seem, and you can get it for 117.97. Okay, you go to the UK, you can get the same 40% off. It's 109 pounds and 95 or 40% off, £65.97. And then in some versions, it's $104.95 and goes down to $62.97. And in Australia, you can get a 29% discount. How do they make all this stuff up? You can go from 170 Australian dollars down to 119.99 Australian dollars, and that's 29% off. I mean, but even if I took this at full list price at $130 in the States, plus local taxes, um, the Cloud Ultra from Honoring that I'm very fond of is 180 bucks. So I think it's a relatively inexpensive shoe and particularly when it's discounted so favorably on the Nike website. 
Should you buy this shoe? Well, if you're in the market for a comfortable trail shoe that's not overtly technical, not massively heavy, looks good, feels good, and is not expensive, then yes, this is uh, one of those shoes that I'm thrilled I bought. I loved my trip to Arizona, loved running there. This is the last, <laughs> I've seen a few of them. This is the last of my racing Arizona videos. Uh, Arizona, you know, you get back and it all seems like a dream. I don't know, maybe it was Utah. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, it'd be great if you'd hit the like button. There's be lots of stuff down in the description below. And as always, I'll happily address any questions you put in the comments. There'll be a big blue subscribe button popping up there and some related videos there. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.